I keep leaving beverages around the area and not bringing them back to near the couch. I'm Jeff Gersman. <laughs> Welcome back to Giant Bomb's coverage of E3 2019. Night two. It's our final segment, and we've loaded up the area with guests for you. We've got Tamur, Mike, and Lucy from GameSpot. How's it going? Well, it's going fantastic. Well, yeah. Awesome. Andy McNamara of Game Informer fame. How are you doing, Jeff? Great. Uh, Michael, also of GameSpot. Hi. Dot com. Yeah. Or Katie, US Gamer over there. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? That's me. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, How are you. things over there? Fine. It's my first E3, so it's well, weird. There's a podcast for that. Yeah, I, I was just on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Whoa. So, we're both on. So, Whoa. Yeah, we're both on it. All right. Shouts out, yeah. Ben. Yeah. Looking forward Shouts to that. Shouts out to Ben. Yeah. So... GameSpot, you, you guys have been hosting shows for, for during the day, like mm. a lot of the time, the, the four of you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In, in varying, kind of just Degrees. like mixing in, like, has it been you two for most of the time, and more filling in, or what, yeah. how's that been working yeah. out? Yeah, it's usually these two yeah. taking up. Yesterday was all just eight us. hours was us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today was me, and then had a break, and Lucy. Yeah. It's been, like, remarkably smooth. Except yeah. for the first oh, time shit. <laughs> the, no. when we were doing, uh, like literally the beginning of the stream, Tuesday morning, Jedi Fallen Order comes on, and so many things went wrong. Mm -hmm. We didn't have program feed, and I didn't know like what the <laughs> graphics looked like ahead of time, so I had no idea whether I was, I was looking right at the camera for like, and I didn't know if I was live. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't hear any, all I could hear in my ear was the pandemonium in the control room, because <laughs> they didn't turn the mic off to like, oh, the one right, yeah, they were just latched. So one like, fuck, it's all broken. Yeah, yeah. it was just like, oh my god, there's so much blood. <laughs> and then like, in the left time, it was just, yeah, it was, but outside of that, it was smooth. Yeah, Actually, cool. there was that one moment today where I was in the war room, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, just doing writing stuff, and I don't know if anyone else noticed, but the power cut in the entire LACC. Right. And like, went, it went down and it went pitch black. And then when it came up, I was like standing face to face with Eric Tay, um, who's <laughs> our like technical guy, and like the look of dread on his face because everything was gone. Like the yeah. stream went down. And in the morning when I came in, Eric like burst out of one of the rooms and he just looked at me and went, "Wake and bake." And I was like, <laughs> "Is he smoking weed?" And I was like, N "He was like." No. And I looked behind him. My man was playing Apex Legends to get hyped for the day. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, so he, nice. Tay was playing Apex Legends. Tay was yeah. playing Apex oh, Legends. No. Like, I looked behind him and it said, like, champion on the screen. And I was yeah. like, okay, he's ready to go. So when the pitch black happens, yeah. like, I saw the Apex Legends click in. He just turned and just started bunny hopping down the <laughs> corridor, like, gone to fix that stuff. Yeah. So that was, like, a moment. How long was it out? Like, a, a minute? Like, like, not long, It right? was, like, yeah. the, it was like 20 seconds. Okay. Yeah, it flashed, yeah. but, like, the, the Wi-Fi like took a lot. Long yeah. time. To oh, I think the yeah. internet like was lagging because our stream was. Luckily, we were on a break, but well, the stream was, literally reset yeah. from the beginning, and then yeah. we had to just like yeah. The rest of the schedule was like ten minutes behind, which is yeah. It worked out. I yeah. never remember what year happened when all that other stuff, but yeah, there were, there was a year where the power was out for like was it like the, Andy. I don't know if you know this. There's like the whole like half of the first day, there was just no power in one of the halls. Yeah, I don't. I just didn't go to that hall. Smart. Yeah, that's, uh, that was my solution yeah. to that. Problem one. That, so that's where our booth a, was, and we were trying uh, to run a live show out of it. And it was like, well, fuck this, I guess. Uh, I was walking between the halls when the power. I didn't realize there was a power outage, and I yeah. went into South Hall for the first time the entire show, and I was like, oh, they're going for like a mood lighting thing. In here. It's all. Uh, it's pretty sultry, and then everything just came back on in the yeah. giant Final Fantasy. What's well, because you walk in there like? Oh, Fire it up! Okay, but let's go. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a, I thought they were just darkening the area where Sony's booth normally was. <laughs> yeah. So you we noticed. Yeah. And it's it like, oh, Nintendo, it's yeah. so bright. It's uh, all kinds of games. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I was here, uh, and so it, it just went out for a second, and then I was like, well, I should go get something to eat. And I took to the streets, and it just, apparently it was just pandemonium when the power went out, because <laughs> every place I tried to go to just had hastily put signs up saying, Fucking closed, no power. It was like yeah, every yeah. every building I walked past just was like no, no. It was more. like roving gangs of teenagers with nail bats. <laughs> yeah, at that point, yeah, it didn't take long yeah. uh, for LA to completely break down. It was like I thought it was just like oh well, it smells like piss, but whatever, it'll be okay. Uh, but no, it's it's society hanging on by a thread uh, with this stuff. But they pulled it back together. I yeah, guess. we were fine. The yeah. the video games continued. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you've been hosting shows, Katie. How's it been for you? You've been, been doing the appointment thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, doing appointments, writing a lot, staying mm -hmm. up till like two a.m. and waking up at six a.m. You know, yeah. that like steady four hours. You're you really know? selling it. Yeah, that yeah, good stuff. it's great. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, I've just been, just been doing that pretty much. Just yeah. appointments, writing, appointments, writing, and then drinking too much at night, you know? So how are you? I'm okay. <laughs> no, just, yeah. yeah, that's that's the classic. I feel yeah. like that's, that's E3 classic. You're, yeah. you're yeah. doing it the way. Yeah, I'm that's, doing ooh, it the E3, E3 way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any appointments stand out to you, or have you gotten to the point where they've all just completely run together? I'm and at you're the just point like, oh. where I'm forgetting what I'm playing, Perfect. you know, which yeah. is great. I saw Cyberpunk today. That was all right. And then I saw... John Wick Hex, which is really interesting. It's mm. like super hot, basically, yeah. which I didn't expect. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's like very real time, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's the only standouts awesome. I have. <laughs> yeah. Andy, how about you? How's the show been? Uh, you've seen a lot of these games already, as had I, going yes. into the show. Um, so it seems like there's like, not to say that there's no games, but I feel like we saw a lot of the big ones prior to the show and, <laughs> and Santa Monica, in, I was like, oh. Yeah, I would have been like, oh, we, there's going to be a lot of E3 and then you get to E3 and you're like, or we saw a lot of it. Yeah, yes, well, we, we did. And we saw some of the great ones. We saw Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. which, uh, which which is looking great, fantastic. Totally. Yeah. We had, I, I think we're like under NDA or something, but we played it yeah. to judge it. Yeah, right. yeah. To not talk about <laughs> That's it. That's right. To judge it. We, we, we can judge. Having played it, just there <laughs> right. to can judge. judge. Uh, and judge I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was great. Yeah. Uh, uh, control, great. Yeah, I, I had a great time with Control. So, I mean, like, we played some really great games on that, and then there's been some good games here as well. You know, Borderlands 3. Mm. Uh, obviously, uh, Cyberpunk is a standout. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're putting in a lot of stuff in right. that. They're working really yeah. hard. Did you uh, see uh, Borderlands 3 at the show? Do you, uh, do you have anything new to report about the uh, microtransactions? <laughs> 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 I, have been, uh, I analyze them. I feel uh -huh. they are still microtransactions. Okay. Uh, that is you don't want to know. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm I'm like that's <laughs> you <laughs> cut through the smoke and mirrors, if you will. Uh, uh, you know, that's what we do at Game Informer. You that's, know? That's, yeah. that's what we do. That's nice. What we do. Yes. Nice. Uh, Argue with magicians on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. It's like the Arrested Development we demand to be taken seriously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> So the, you know we're we're here night two coming into to day three here uh, is the the GameSpot stage show still going strong? Yeah, it's going it's going strong. It's starting to like wind down now, right? Like yeah. that's uh, when it's winding down is when they usually wheel me out. So okay. I'm yeah. going down tomorrow. No, so. we, got, we got we got a you oh, and sure, I. Oh shit! I forgot you're in it with me. Yeah, it's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Well, yeah, 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 I mean, Tamna, we're we're doing nine to one tomorrow. We yeah. got some. Oh, we got some pretty dope folk on there. We have Suda 51, 51 to like yeah. start the day. Yeah, that's a lot. And we, uh, we're gonna see Tim Schaefer. Yeah. I saw the the schedule. I didn't see the segment, uh, but I saw there was a Fallout seventy six segment with Todd Howard. Oh, yeah. that was us. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it was tense. We did. We, I don't think either of us really shied away from. Well, he, no, because super candid about. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was you have to be at this point, yeah. right? If you're. There's, <laughs> This one thing I like prefaced the question I was like maybe this is morbid and basically his answer was like yeah that's pretty morbid but yeah <laughs> yeah you kind of right but no he was I feel yeah. like he came to LA just to do damage control yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's you know when they put him out there last year to kind of be the face of that game even though you know like developments kind of happening in mm -hmm. you know, multiple places and stuff like they then have to close the loop on that right if mm -hmm. if he doesn't come out and do that then next time they have to bring him out to say here's our next game yeah. there's gonna be some people that are like yeah but that's the fallout 76 guy so they, yeah. they probably yeah. have to try to i mean we asked that. him i was like if you can go back and do it again would you do anything different he's like oh yeah he's like uh first off i would do like a 24 7 beta stress test for like weeks before i was like early access essentially he's like i also like give it to people for free if they played fallout 4 etc mm -hmm. um but as he said you know like hindsight's 2020 they didn't do that um, yeah. So now they're like, trying to like figure yeah. it out in year two. It was when he was talking about you know we let people down and we've hurt people and people mm. have really invested and I was like, I didn't know how that interview was gonna go because I mean last year it was a, obviously a very different tone and time when you yeah, interviewed so him. I, oh yeah, yeah, I interviewed him the year before and it was more like exploration of what he was thinking and and what he was wearing. You asked him wearing, about that jacket. Yeah, I, I got to the bottom of where he got that jacket from. Um, nice. And like the hard hitting, hard -hitting the journalism that's what Air Force yeah. trained for. Um, yeah, so and what he are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's well, that's the thing. He, he wore another fantastic jacket. Yeah, it was a different did. one, and he I was did. tempted to sort of like end the interview on a fun one and go, "Oh, so yeah. where'd you get it from?" But no, it was <laughs> right it was too. You know, right we yeah. fucked up. We can't. <laughs> well, like he's he's always quite open about 
the stuff he's talking about. I mean, like within reason. Like if right. you ask him about Starfield, he's going to be like, "Nah, I'm not telling you anything about that." But like, he's not one of those kind of people. And, and I know you've seen them where they try and they're clearly like ignoring the elephant in the room to talk around it. Right. Like he's very much about. I, and I'm sure you've you've all interviewed him before. But like he's if there's if there's a mess to deal with, he will deal with it. Mm. And the reason he's out there is because like. If anyone's gonna flash a smile and talk smooth talk their way out of it, like it's him that can do it. And people generally kind of, and I think he's kind of one of the people that if he says something, he will hold himself accountable for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that's why he's out there. And ordinarily, you'll, I, I'm the kind of person who's quite cynical. Where if a developer's like, yeah, oh, we're gonna fix it, I'm like, oh, are you gonna fix it though? Um, right. Whereas yeah. if he says it, I'm a little more inclined to believe it because like I know that. His name is synonymous with certain franchises, and I think Bethesda are keen enough to know that if we screw this one up, the next time we talk Elder Scrolls or Starfield, people are going right. to come in a certain way. Um, so it makes sense for him to be out there doing that stuff. Yeah, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, so I may, I, I saw different versions of what the Gamespot stage uh, schedule looked like. Mm. Was there an Anthem segment? No. Okay. No. Oh, right. sir. Uh, we don't talk about Anthem. Yeah. Don't think anyone's no, talking about Anthem. No, 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 no. All right. I, I, yeah. I thought I'd heard that that maybe Bioware was like someone wore a shirt. Of, I think yeah, Anthem on it. Yeah. yeah. Doing something <laughs> similar. Uh, wondering if they would do something similar. Yeah. Uh, to, we, the only thing, I mean, like during that EA Play thing, there was that brief bookend in between a couple right. of those games. But no, like I think we talked about Anthem in relation to more of the other games we had. Okay. Destiny Two, Warframe, etc. Yeah. So I guess mm -hmm. Anthem's kind of textbook case of worst case scenario when it comes to like a games as service kind of format. Like, right. Yeah. So I, I think I wondered if they were going to be out here, you know, around the show or you know maybe somewhere. Yeah. Like they. Yeah, like something deeper in the EA thing, going like, so. Remember us? Yeah. yeah. We're still. We got some ideas. Because um, yeah. they they took all the dates off of their roadmap, like yeah. not uh, before the show, yeah. and they were like, "Yeah, we we got we clearly we have more work to do before mm. we work on this content we promised." And the play thing was just them reminding people that they had Cataclysm or whatever it is in the right. test. Mm -hmm. Oh right, yeah, and yeah. People yeah. are not really liking it, especially mm -hmm. the people that played been grinding for what ninety days now, right? Or more than that now, but yeah, it's. I imagine turning sentiment around on a game like that. I'm trying to think, like you know, like games that are just like been able to to turn it around with Final Fantasy 14. Yeah. yeah. Final Ooh, Final hey. Fantasy 14. <laughs> Shouts out to Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike now Williams, you said the bad words. Oh, uh, uh, boy. Mm. Y'all right. don't want me to go off on that. Yeah. <laughs> he described did, it. Did this warm up your hands? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All right. Back. Let me tell y'all about Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> Shadow Rings is gone. <laughs> I've tried to play game. that game about five times and I cannot sign up for an account. This Square Enix no, oh, has no, got no, Square Enix a is wild online thing sign up pro. Yeah. If That's anyone like, from Square Enix is, is listening and can get me into the it's, game, it's easy. Yeah, sure Just put yeah. the Play Online disc in your PlayStation 2. Right. <laughs> connect the network adapter. Right, 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 right. Connect it to your phone line. Okay. And then just do follow the online prompts. I did that. It doesn't account. work. I'm oh, telling well, you, it doesn't right. work. Okay. I've got like, I, I can't do it anymore because I've exhausted all my emails. <laughs> so like, if I really want to do it, I'll have to set up a new email. And I've done that twice before. I want to play that game because Michael Hyam won't stop going on about it. But I can't get past that login process. Yeah. I'm not hardcore enough for That's it. the first quest. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will admit, like, trying to sign up for that damn thing it's was, like... It's the hardest thing the, in that game. Yeah, because the other thing, too, is, like, how it's split between, like, even on PC, it's like, oh, if you got the Steam version, well, if you get the, the separate version from Square Enix, like, it ain't gonna work. Like, they don't... They don't <laughs> communicate with each other, yeah. But even though it's, like, there's still, like, cross-platform stuff, which is, which is pretty dope, but, like, come on, Tam. Dude, you're gonna like that shit. Mate. Final no. Fantasy fourteen is the deviant art of MMORPGs. I'll that say is, that. You heard it here first. Yeah. Wow, okay. You're, you're kind of like reselling me on this. Yeah. Like, all right. and, and closing the loop, there's a, good, there's a player in there who um, he role plays as Todd Howard. Todd Howard, yeah. Um, yeah. And he walks around, and there's an item in the game called Torn Pages of Oblivion. And he walks around handing that out to people. <laughs> wow. And Dude, his little text yeah. Yeah. is just buy Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to ask Todd Howard about it, but then the interview got too serious. Yeah. So yeah. I, so yeah. I want to get in there and role play as Pete Hines. And just walk behind him the entire yeah. time, uh, yeah. one step behind him, just making sure he's doing the right and thing. Just like anytime he gets off scripts, just like correct him. Yeah. And be like, mm, mm, we're not talking. Sorry, we're not talking. Yeah, we're not about talking that about right that. Now. No, no, we're not talking about that. That's bizarre, <laughs> but kind of amazing. I don't know. So, 
when you say deviant art, <laughs> I think of some pretty specific stuff <laughs> uh, that I think of as being more appropriate for like Second Life or VR chat. All right. Or, yeah. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a okay, little bit. All right. But then okay. it was like there's a uh, anime cat people. Which, hey, hey. Hang on, you can't just say there's anime cat people because you're the person making the anime cat people <laughs> yeah. and naming them after oh, yeah, anime yeah. characters. <laughs> you blasted me on the, the Square Enix pre-show that we did. <laughs> all right, I mean... I, I mean, so, I appreciate because I'm a huge Persona fan, so yeah. I love it. So I, I, I made all my Final Fantasy XIV characters modeled after Persona characters because like, that, that's, that's how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I got yeah. Chie Satsuneko. So as I, they're all cat people, too. Uh, I just got that. Yeah, yeah. No. now you just got <laughs> it. I got Yukiko Amiyagi. Oh, I'm very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> As you brought yeah. this on yourself by putting them all in the same category. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. That's, I mean, let's keep going on the ammo. Uh, Andy, are you still playing World of Warcraft? <laughs> Way too much. Yeah. Yeah, I played too much. Wow. It's yeah. a problem. You ever think about branching out? I hear Final Fantasy XIV's got cat ladies. Uh, you know, <laughs> transition away, then you just went right back. <laughs> you escaped. It's like a boomerang. <laughs> If you're not making it harder for yourself, the interview's not fun anymore. I gotta live on the edge, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just I'm old school. I stick with the I stick with the wow. Yeah. Stick with the wow. Every once in a while, like someone's like, you gotta play. Actually, I had a friend that was like, you gotta play, and I watched him go through the login process, <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Went I'm not doing the 14. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get. I, I watched someone Hell. do it for like. Two hours screaming and yelling and like I, mean, I don't know how. Yeah. How do I get this expansion? Why doesn't weak. this work? And I was like, no way. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling about? The, I know you're you're quite the Destiny player. Uh, how are you feeling about the uh, announced changes? The concept of you know free to play, all the kind of sectioned off content. I mean, I, I I'm excited for them. I, I think it's interesting. I mean, I yeah. think. I go back, you know, the story being that they went to Blizzard and asked them, like, hey, should we make a Destiny 2 or not? Right. You know, and I still feel that was a mistake. I think they should have kept One World. And I, I still believe their next step should be to make Destiny, which sounds hilarious. But, I mean, they literally right. should go back and start Destiny. Yeah. And a One World and keep building it and go from there and, and keep things going forward. But I'm very happy with what they're doing as far as, like, trying to continue to support Destiny 2. I think it's... Yeah, I love it when a video game company, I, I give Ubisoft a lot of credit for that too. Yeah. Like they're doing a great job of like putting games out there when they have fans, investing in them and getting them more content and, and helping them love their games, right? And, right. And, and I think Destiny's doing that. And I, I kind of, I backed off a little bit because I was like, this game's like, there's going to be another one, right? And, and, and like, I right. kind of like, yeah. I want like my Taper off a little bit. You're like, I don't need my gear level to be, and by the time I come back, there'll be an easier way to get that number up there anyway. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, I still think it's a brilliant game. I, I can't wait for them to make Destiny, once again, which I know sounds ins insane, because I really right. think they're going to nail it, especially when they're on their own and it's an independent thing and they do it more, like thinking things through, I, I feel a little bit more, because there's a bunch of really smart guys there and, and really talented, so I'm excited about the future of that game. Yeah. And, and what they're doing now to keep everybody happy. Totally. I, I, I think, you know, being able to remove it from the release schedule dictated by all those leaked contracts and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And, and being able to be like, oh, we're going to make content that makes sense for this and, and talk about it as if it were an MMO because it fucking is. It is, uh, yes. And, and that sort of stuff has been, it's been fun to like watch them be, you know, fr free is a weird word, but you know, like like to, to be able to kind of call some of their own shots. Agreed, agreed. Be in control of their own, what, whatever the word is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that stuff's been been pretty exciting. Yeah, year. I think it is, and I I think that like you know in in the world that we're going towards, where people are like like games are becoming like not just games as service because like I hate that word, but like where people are like in love with a franchise. I'm, like you said, I'm a persona person. You know what I mean? That like yeah. and when people can can bring people more content in those worlds. I mean that's when um, you can engage people longer. It's like that's when they're the best. That's when I love when, I, when I'm playing a game for like I've been playing this game for like two years. Is when I'm like kick-ass game, right? Like, this is a great game, and yeah. I, I think we're doing more and more of that as, like, across the industry, uh, and I think it's good. Yeah, so. it's been an interesting change to watch. Oh, you know what? I have to ask, Katie, you, maybe you played this as well. One other thing for Santa Monica, the Stealth Kayak game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that game rules. Yeah, Phantom <laughs> Covert Ops yeah. for Oculus Quest. Yeah, man. Have you heard about this? No. Oh, Wait, what? It's a VR game. It's a stealth action game. And the Ooh. whole game is, t is set in a kayak. <laughs> there's, you're in water. There's always a little vent to go through. There's always a little something to be like, oh, shit, I need to paddle away from the lights. Ooh, I got an Oculus Quest press, press account. I'm going to check that. Was it it's not out, out yet. yet. It's, it's not, not out yet. yet. It's not out yet. Uh, yeah. Got to be a judge. Yeah. 
It's got to yeah, be. Fuck y'all. They, they're, it's, it's here. They got a meeting the show. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're, I'm actually going to see, uh, I have an Oculus appointment tomorrow, so great. I'll probably see it there. Play, play. What's it called again? Uh, Phantom Covert Ops. Okay. That's really the most name. name. Yeah, I like really that. Really strong. It. It. Eric Ashton. It just sounds like it's you and VR going like, I'm going to run into that. I'm going to run yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really like, really <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And What's then that? you have a sniper rifle, an MP5, what? and a solid <laughs> pistol, and explosives. I thought you were yeah, just kayaking. Like, throw a no, you're kayaking, and then like, I need to shoot out these lights, or shoot these guards, or blow up this radio tower. Like, you're doing stealth missions, but you're always in a fucking kayak, and there's always fucking water. And you're like a badass. In that kayak, yeah. Yeah. all these guys are on land, and you're like just taking them down, sitting oh, in a kayak. Yeah. They were it's like not moving. Like, it's kind of great. They, great. They, they told us about it before they had anybody play it. They gave a little presentation, and you're watching this, and you're just like, <laughs> "Fucking what?" Uh, and and it just sounded ridiculous. But then as soon as I got into it, I'm like, "Oh, this is fantastic." See, the this kayak is, is a good excuse to like not have to use your legs, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like they they solved locomotion in yeah. VR in a fun way. And it actually, you know, you can put one paddle in and kind of curve out, you know, like do kayak shit. <laughs> I say that as someone who kayaked yeah. once. Yeah. Uh, I did some kayak shit. Uh, also, did you really? I mean, I'm just like double check that, that fact. You really kayaked once. Once. Okay, I'll go once. My wife you. talked me into it, <laughs> berated me into it. I was, so I was afraid I would die. Because I was convinced that kayaks were just like a hole and your legs were stuck in them. And I was like, well, I'm going to fall over and drown. <laughs> I'll be stuck. My legs will be in this kayak. It'll be the end of me. I'm, I'm no, no, absolutely not. That's like one of the first things you learn. I do whitewater kayaking every once in a while. You mm -hmm. have to like learn that twist and thing. But that, that's like whitewater kayaking. Yeah. I go, okay. What? Why is this you do humble what? brag that is coming out? <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> I do <laughs> whitewater kayaking. Kayak. 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 Humble brag. <laughs> yeah. Excuse so, me. I do uh, whitewater. Oh, I got the boat kayak. and I paddled and I didn't drown. I'm not humble bragging. I'm just saying I <laughs> do it every once in a while. You made it out alive. Congratulations. Do it today. Today. That's white people. Yeah, was, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why it's called white water kayak. So, <laughs> no, we just rented break. a kayak, and it was just a, it was just an open top thing, and you could just sit on it and just kind of like a canoe. Yeah, right. kind of like a canoe, but not as yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was at why, that point why is it <laughs> not? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop gatekeeping kayaking. Man's is he, dude. It's, it's gate kayaking. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, and I I did not drown. Uh, thankfully, yeah, uh, the river was probably not deep enough, but also it was so, it was so dirty you'd float on the. I, I can't was... such deep rivers. Yeah, <laughs> just doubling down on it. Yeah, just keep going. It's like, yeah. Oh man, yeah, I'm a professional kayakist. Yeah, yeah. kayakist. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about uh, you know are you gonna go to Tenocon? We had uh, Rebecca. Yeah, on last um, night. this might we'll be going to Tenocon for the first time. I got into Warframe pretty heavily starting January or so. Mm -hmm. That game's fascinating to me just for how they kind of roll well, out I got stuff. into Warframe a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of done with it. I don't know. Yeah. But it's cool that you're into it. <laughs> I've been to every E3. <laughs> What year did no, <laughs> start E three keeping? Yeah, uh, but you know, yeah, that's that's you know, you're known as a, a Warframeist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's what's this funny. Uh, this uh, this year, like so many people we brought on stage were not there for a brand new game. They were there for right yeah. this game that's been out for like Siege's mm -hmm. been out for four years. Destiny mm -hmm. like. Destiny's been out for five, the franchise itself. You have so many people coming on, it's less... The questions are like, what's this game going to be? It's, how are you going to change this game that's been around? And how are we going to reintroduce people? Yeah. How are they going to, mm -hmm. like, re-engage with that content? Mm -hmm. How is the Final Fantasy XIV's newest expansion bringing you back? And uh, a lot of it's like, you know, this is vestigial stuff from older MMOs. Yeah. And it's funny to see other people looking back to see how they do it. But, like, then you see Warframe and it's... You know, like like Elder Scrolls Online, for instance, they just like removed all level gating, so you can just pretty much if you jump yeah. in today, you could play Morrowind elsewhere, uh, etc. Just anything you wanted to, even if you mm -hmm. were level two. Uh, it's just funny how many people like we were talking to on stage that were like, mm -hmm. "So where's the game now?" As opposed to where it was when you launched almost a decade ago. It's nuts. Yeah, and that's I think you were you know as you talk about the the games kind of lasting longer and stuff. It it really is this kind of E3 of patch notes. And it's really yeah. cool. Like, <laughs> honestly, like five years ago, when not even five years ago, like when this kind of format started, like you said, you kind of hate the phrase "game to service." When this 
new things started happening. It's not necessarily new, but more in mainstream games. I hated it. If you had asked me five years ago, mm -hmm. I, I'm probably on camera m numerous times saying, I don't like this, I don't like the direction it's going. Now, those are like most of the games I cover. Uh, and most, yeah. most of the games I enjoy talking about. And it's funny how games are competing less and less for just like money up front. It's right. more for time. That's yeah, like, yeah. I, think, mm -hmm. I think Anthem's biggest failing is it doesn't reward your time. And I think that was yeah. Destiny's problem at first, back in what, 2013, 14? Mm -hmm. And it didn't reward your time. And I think the, the games that people stick with are the ones that say, like, oh, yeah, we realize you spent three months like doing this and this and this. So yeah. Cataclysm and Anthem didn't do that, et cetera. It's, I don't know, it's not really kind of showing people why they need to be playing your game over and over and engaging with it all the time. So how does a staff like GameSpot then address that sort of thing? Because that's w when, when I was doing that, uh, and we were trying to cover everything we could, like World of Warcraft was really the only thing that, that was out there causing that sort of thing. It was like, oh, this, this, we, we need a WoW editor now. That's strange. But you can't have an Anthem editor and a Warframe editor and a GTA Online editor and a Red Dead editor. You know, like all Unless these you're kinds. IGN. Well, yeah, well, yeah. They have that's, Destiny podcasts and stuff, yeah. Well, they know. I mean, but they're can, like three times their size. You know, You'll be running a Warframe podcast in six months. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I've got ideas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, how how do you find that? Because I, I think that's that's been the interesting interesting thing for us is you know it's like traditionally the press has been generalists. We're, yep. We move from game to game. Mm -hmm. We cover the game. It's out. We maybe do a strategy guide or whatever and move on. And obviously, like now that games are constantly getting updates and they have these huge long tails for years and years and years, mm -hmm. like that's changed. Like, what's the strategy to, like, when do you revisit a game? Is it just like, hey, they've got something new to say? Or are you on a schedule? It's like, up, oh, time to check in on Red Dead Online and see if it's worth playing yet. <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. All right. Check back in later. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky one now because, like, it's, it's, it's both easier and harder to do. If you look at a game like Fortnite, like, oh, God. We, oh, man, covering that game. And anything I say here is with a caveat that, Fortnite is a fine game. Like everyone, yeah. everyone yeah. loves it. But like, but I am sick of writing about Fortnite. I tell you that much. Oh, I can't um, believe Gamespot reviewed Fortnite Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> my that's Thursdays, yeah. my Thursdays are like dedicated to Fortnite almost because that's the thing that on that day, um, Fortnite is popping. Everyone wants to, or uh, the large majority of people or, of our audience want are coming for Fortnite content on that day. Just so because like, there's new content, or because just, they have just looked weekly? at a chart long enough <laughs> and been like, Thursday's Fortnite day. No, because for Thursday is New Challenges Day, right? Okay. So like yeah. that's the weekly. Like it's not even a little while back we could get away with you know writing about the new uh, Warcraft expansion, wherever mm -hmm. it may be, and like you would have to just cover. You know, it weren't. The game was, wasn't changing on a day-to-day -day basis or right. a week-to-week -week basis. It would be like every six months a new patch is out or, or a new major piece of content is out. And that feels manageable. Like you can have the, the World of Warcraft fan, you know, take care of that. If a new, you know, Warframe expansion comes out, we can easily put Mike on that. The tougher stuff is the weekly changes where it's like every week um, a, a, some small element of the game has changed and the audience is so thirsty that that small si insignificant thing to most people, like I, I would look, most people would look at it and be like, that's not worth covering. But in actual fact, there's hundreds of thousands of people that are super interested in knowing where the new puzzle piece is or some bullshit like that. Right. Um, and that means like you almost do have to have in this, in this day and age a couple people on your staff that either know it and dedicated to writing about it um, or have someone full time for that stuff. Like, and then we, once you get those down, then you have Anthem or the division yeah. coming to the fray. Yeah. And then it's like and for right. the next six years, we have to worry about We have to, too. the yeah. way you do it, the way we deal with that, like uh, or the way I deal with it, it's like you got to pick one, like, mm -hmm. and, and like just, it used to be Destiny and like the Destiny right. stuff when Destiny was new and there was a lot of mystery around it and stuff like Zer was kind of, uh, there was like a, a thirst to see where he is and what he's got. We would cover Destiny, I would write about Destiny. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, that kind of dipped away after a while because of quality of Destiny and kind of interest around it and Zer himself kind of like, he was peddling the same way as week after week. Yeah. And then that's when kind of Fortnite hit and then Fortnite is the one that just refuses to go away mm -hmm. um, and nothing has usurped it. Nothing's yeah. come along, like Apex came along and there was a time when we thought, all right, maybe we'll have to have Fortnite and Apex at the same time. But obviously Apex is first, 
you know year hasn't been in the same way it doesn't have weekly challenges and the right. battle pass was kind of like eh. yeah, um, yeah so nothing's come to usurp um, Fortnite just yet so as it stands like we've got a couple people dedicated to Fortnite, and then it's the weekly grind of it and it's honestly exhausting because you know they they have a team of people who are constantly churning out content yep and we've had new stories about the good and bad of that mm -hmm. um, but it means that you can't escape it like it used to be just one day where there'll be challenges now it's like John Wick is in the game for some reason uh, Michael Jordan's crossing over with the game and you're like oh but, but to your point like Ross each time you're working the, on those yeah. each time you're working on those you know there's six YouTubers who dedicate their entire life to covering yeah. Warframe mm -hmm. And that was and the thing back in the, the World of Warcraft days, I think we pretty quickly realized, like, you know, a lot of fan sites and WoWhead, just like item database sites yeah. and all this other stuff sprung up that were going to cover World of Warcraft far better than our entire editorial team ever could. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's, I, we, we originally, there was ideas with Giant Bomb early on that we were like, oh, we, we've got this wiki tech, we're going to spin it out into all these sub-sites mm. and do a Mass Effect wiki with a Mass Effect dedicated this and that and the other. Mm. Uh, and then we got acquired and, you know, they, yeah. they were like, ah, whatever. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> also, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, the idea yeah, was that yeah, the tech yeah. would be modular enough and, you know, you'd have communities theoretically and, you know, that sort of... It, it, I think there's. I still think there's a way to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk more about it later. Uh, um, Katie, American Gaming Biz. Uh, <laughs> That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a somewhat smaller editorial team. Like, how do you face these challenges of like splitting your time between these ongoing games that are always updating and and we're like just, new stuff? We're just really choosy. That's yeah. pretty much it. Like, we have. Six people editorially and three people for guides and SEO bullshit. So yeah. it's like. <laughs> Is that their uh, official title? <laughs> no, no. Like, honestly, they're the hardest working people I know. Like, they're yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, like, they're like definitely the backbone for us to do whatever we do. Mm -hmm. So, like, we basically, like, we do, like, strap meetings where we're like, okay, what games are worth covering still? Like, what is still getting traffic? And we kind of, like, just hash that out. So it's like obviously Fortnite always like if there's a big update we cover that, but like you know there's games that still slip through the cracks like Rainbow Six Siege is still doing mm. well but like we don't cover that because we don't have like a person on team that can do that and we don't have the freelance budget really for it so it's yeah. like something like a harder thing we're super scrappy like we still do like pretty good traffic for the size of our team like yeah. we we do well but yeah it's definitely like really hard it's kind of shocking to hear when people have like big teams I'm like how. You guys have so many people. It's crazy. It's right. amazing. Yeah. It's like, what do you even do with all those yeah. people? I mean, like, I sit like I three yeah. rows away from all those people. I'm like, what do all those people do? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm like, I have what? no idea. I have like 10 jobs. They're like, yelling what? about titles of videos all day. I don't, and changing them. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah. I think it, it, it's, it's insane. insane. I think it's, <laughs> it's pretty much game spot. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. So, so it's pretty well. now. Yeah. You just... You got me pegged. <laughs> I walk nice. through there to do a podcast once a week. That's, so I listen. Um, Andy, it seems like you're kind of in the, the middle of that stuff where, you know, with a, with a magazine, obviously, like, you want to get something really strong for the cover yes. yeah. to get people in. But beyond that, do you feel this need to be like, oh, well, we've got to cover these trends? Obviously, there's a website, too. You know, yeah. So, you know, yeah. yeah. But, um, and a podcast and, and all the videos podcast, and all that stuff. Yeah, we, 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 we're multimedia, Website baby. these days, I think, means yeah. video yes, and yeah. podcasts yes. and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. Well, maybe not podcasts. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you look at me. Yes. <laughs> I just canceled your Warframe podcast. Uh, <laughs> Warframing.net. Yeah, yeah, well, ooh, that's got to yeah, be taken. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, yeah. If not, it is now. Uh, but so... What goes into the the planning of the magazine? Is, do you have to figure for like, oh, well, we know that these games are popular and they've seen updates. Like, do you find that you're kind of having the team well, go I, like, okay, well, we need we need a little bit of Fortnite in every issue or anything like that, or is it? I mean, we we try not to do that. I mean, not not to, not to say that Fortnite's not great and a trend. Yeah. But but I, it, it's uh, I, I I think this is a very interesting conversation. By the way, number one, like we've talked about the generalist. Versus mm. the specialist, right? It, yeah. It's a very real thing because mm. you're like, I mean, you can turn on a stream and go like, this guy knows a lot about Destiny. I totally. mean, like, damn it, I've been playing it every day. Yeah. And this guy still. He is living inside <laughs> of it yeah, somehow yeah, yeah, like, in a like, way like, that like, I never will. 
And it's amazing, right? And I, and I think there's a lot of, of people out there that are specialists that are doing really work, like amazing work, and, and like kudos to them. And, and I, I think it's, it's important to the game industry to have people that, that dive in like that yeah. deep into the stuff. So I tend to think we like to have people that have uh, and encourage their own passions and games that they love and that they should keep playing them. So we have that generalist or that kind of specialist information and we have that base, but we don't always report on it. Yeah. You know I mean, I think we try to embrace the generalists. I think there's some there's there's people that want that that view from a higher position where it's not so much like, you know, yeah. I play too much WoW. I get it. I, I it, yeah. it puts blinders on me for other things, <laughs> right? And, and like people appreciate that view, and so I think mm -hmm. we try to lean into that. So we're just trying to get people to like see games, find games they love, um, what their next game that they're going to love more than the one they play now, right? Yeah. And I think we lean into that. So we want every issue to like. Um, we want to hit all the, the high points, but we definitely do follow through with some of the like, let's get it there, let's get it to launch, let's look at what happens after launch. But that usually goes to the website at that point. We usually try to keep right. the magazine focusing on the future and what's coming and yeah. like, you know, what, what, what you're going to want to play next and cool. hopefully helping you find that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're, we're in a weird middle ground, you know, like being a website but still having a, subscri a subscription product. It's yeah. like there's little bits of what you do and what we do and, and little bits of, of what GameSpot does. And But I think for us it's just been a matter of like, well, you know, we're going to just try to be true to ourselves and play what we are going to play. You know, there, there's stuff that we feel like, oh, we need to cover this, we need to know about this, don't necessarily need to sink into it for a month or something. But, you know, hey, big game comes out, we're going we're gonna to cover it. I you mean, know? the thing that makes me so angry, by the way, if you want to talk about angry Andy, is uh -huh. that, like, the, the games press gets, gets a lot of shit Mm -hmm. For like being this like games journalism, and and like yeah. everyone I know at every publication that I've either worked with or not is passionate about games and try to talk about games and communicate yeah. that passion or love or like what we're finding that we think is interesting and you cool. You wouldn't do this job if you if you didn't have if you that. Didn't, it like, doesn't didn't pay well that. enough. It's it's, it's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you would do something else. Yeah. You would do something. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, yeah, like, oh, I mean, like, yeah. yeah. The job of the street is killing on yeah. this, right? And and I think that I think people. Like like dismiss that that work that we do to mm -hmm. get even that stuff because it's it's hard. Like I mean, people are like, well, it's just a quick preview, whatever. And like a lot of work goes behind those previews and what you do. And and so uh, you know, my little mini rant is just that like, you know, everyone who's going after games journalism, people in games journalism work hard to bring you this information and learn what we can and like talk to you about the things that we can across the board. I think it also speaks to the limitations that you have as an editorial staff. I mean, I mean, Tam can speak to this. Like when press conferences is popping off during E3, it's like, yeah. hey, who can write up the story? And I'm like, yo, I can't, uh, my head's in another space. But also like even when it's not a big event, for me, it's like I like to cover Japanese games. Mm -hmm. And every time I do, like that shit pops off. Like people are looking for that because we don't, I mean, other than, there's a couple other folks on GameSpot who can cover Japanese games, but like that's my niche. Like Final Fantasy XIV with Yakuza, Judgment, Localization, yeah. Persona. Whenever I cover like Persona Five Royale, like that, like the numbers are great. Like people mm -hmm. are looking for this niche, and I feel like that, you know, someone like me can go there, but we can't. Like someone like me can't dedicate all of that time to that niche. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I need to be on doing other things that are like even bigger than that. So. You have to be a generalist, but yeah. I mean, also a special. Like, you want to be that specialist and carve out the niche that you want. Yeah. Uh, but you don't always have that freedom. I, I don't always have that freedom. And I, that, that's the hope with you know uh, you, you, that hopefully you've got a team that has interests that cross different genres and and, yeah. and and cover different things. That was you know, like back when we were you know we would cover E3. We would, it was weird. You know, we would live stream the press conferences, but also there would be cases because the live stream delays were longer than. I would still be sitting in the audience uh, with my. I had a phone that had a keyboard on it back when. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah that's what my, a sidekick. My, my, my team was <laughs> sidekick. Was sidekick huh? Literally a sidekick. Yeah, you're, you're side talking. Yeah, and I'm in there <laughs> on AOL Instant Messenger, sending details to uh, Tor, who was the head of GameSpot News at the time. Oh, he yeah. still gets emails. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. I get his emails. You get now. Tor's emails. Yeah, I get his emails. Uh, yeah, and, and Homer's. And I'm, also, yeah, got, yeah. it's a weird cross section. Shout out uh, to Homer Abar. Yeah, uh, and just like sending him details about it's. This is the price. This is that. This is that. And like that was like the as close as we got to a live blog for a while. But it, it was that feeling of just like you kind of have to know a little bit about everything because you know when you see a thing up on the screen, you have to be able to process it quickly, yeah. even if it's like. I don't know anything about this genre, yeah. but I feel like that's that's even changed uh, to where 
the genres, like, I feel like there's so much specialist knowledge to be had in each one of these genres these days, where, you know, back in the day, it was like, oh, you know, here's another game with a bike or a gun or both. I don't know. Mm. Uh, and, kayak. you know, it was, or, it was <laughs> yeah, kayak. A kayak uh, and, and, you know, it was a lot easier to write, like, 200 words. You, you, Write 200 words about anything. Play, <laughs> I, go to E3, play a game for 10 minutes. I could give you 300 words back then in like 20 minutes, whatever. Just blah, 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 here you go, whatever. Mm. Uh, and it's been weirdly nice to have those muscles and those tools get completely dull. <laughs> I can't, I, I don't think I could crank it out like that anymore because of what we do now is so different. Like, it's just like I'm, I'm out of that game. Uh, and feels kind of good in a weird way. It feels like a little more. But you guys do something. But you guys do something special. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I think that's, that's like everyone. Whole, like you I lean. Mean, you lean into what you do best. I think right? that's what everyone has to do. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and it's, it differentiates publications in a way that I think actually lets us do this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because like you know, fifteen years ago. The idea of we've been knife fighting in the totally, alley, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, not you and me, but you know, like, like, but you know, there were people inside GameSpot that were just like, "Yeah, don't talk to IGN people when you see them out." <laughs> what? Yeah, it was it was weird. It was, there was this whole yeah. office, yeah. like every there was, day. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of weird shit. Like there was people had to be told to not drink at parties after some oh, shit went down. There, there was stuff. Right. There was stuff yeah, back right. then. It was you know so. It, it just used to be a very different vibe between different publications. It was like, you know, it, it was just dumb because, like, we're all at the same events. It's yeah. all, yeah. everyone, it's like the, the handful of people that, like, share your life experience, their work experience closest. Yeah. And, and, but you're like, fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of how the East Coast office is. I mean, <laughs> giant bomb. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. That's, yeah. They see you walk in, they're like, that's the, that's yeah. the motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I hear so whispers. Like, because in, in London, at least, I mean, been in the industry for a good few years now. But mm. because it's you have the shared life experience, but also London is weirdly small, right? Mm. And so you just you would run into them all the time anyway. And so there's no real space for animosity because yeah. it's too small, too close, and you're you. And that back, I remember, you know, like 2012, where you still had a ton more preview events. You know, yeah, you would right. be going to multiple per yeah, week, whereas yeah. now it's way more spread apart. And often they fly places and stuff, whereas in London they would just mm. pick the hospital club town. Yeah, that yeah. same place. The same bloody place. And you'd be there about once a week, and you would just see everyone all the time. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and in, a, in a place like London, like the industry is so small, or the people covering it are so small that chances are you've worked together at some point. Yeah. Mm. Like the current IGN staff are former colleagues of ours, so it's like you can't... <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't be knife fighting your former friends right it's yeah no, no um, there's there's no point yeah yeah no i point. think for us it wasn't you know like obviously the, the country's a little larger but mm. there was a time i don't know like I, I feel like i was spending maybe two to four weeks in las vegas every year because every game events. event yeah. was in it was just like gotta fly back to las vegas for two days to see this game and then go shoot guns. It was like, because you could go rent machine guns and be like, well, we're either going to go shoot guns. One time we flew planes for a Namco event. Wow. Uh, with like, it was like laser tag. It was like they had wired the planes up for, like they had smoke pots and, and, and fake guns on them. And if you painted the other plane with your laser, smoke poured out of it. What and the? it was just, they put journalists up in fucking planes. Oh my God. Uh, so other people were in the planes to, okay. to have them take off and land, <laughs> for the record. They did the takeoff and landing, and then they're like, all right, go. And I was like one of like two people who didn't throw up. It was, which was pretty awesome. Uh, but it was just like dumb shit like that. And you were yeah. just constantly like, oh, EA's got another Need for Speed game, so I guess they want to go take people out to some racetrack in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, and those would be the ones i just go out to and be like, just show me the game. I don't, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to the track thing. Just show me the fucking yeah. game. Wasn't there like a Far Cry event where they like had people out in like the middle of the East Bay? East? Yeah. 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 Like, and then like Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's my or hometown. Or a lot of yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like a helicopter rolling through and there's like a dude cosplaying as like the main villain or something. Is like, that the one with the actual dog though? Was it? I don't know. Was it for four? Oh, it's like, I don't know. Why do they do shit like that? I don't know. It's I so extra. There was one, uh, Resident Evil 6. Uh, they took us by train up to Manchester. Mm -hmm. So a good three hour train journey away to do a sort of haunted house thing yeah. where you go through and they, they gave everyone um, like 
air guns and they had people dressed up as zombies that would obviously come out and grab you. Uh, and then at the end, I got this like rocket launcher. What? Sick. Yeah, well, I mean, like it wasn't, it wasn't a real rocket launcher, but it fired off something weird. Confetti. Didn't even play the game. Yeah, yeah it was basically like a giant confetti gun, and I just, you know, went up to Manchester for a, a weird day. Yeah, the, the weird, the extra weird ones are when they didn't bother to bring yeah. a video game. Yeah. And you're like, why am I even? I'm trying to think. There's a rock star event in Phoenix at a laser tag place. It was just like, come to Phoenix and come to this laser tag place, and then play Oni. Wow, uh, and a couple of other games. It was just like, all right, okay, <laughs> sure. sure. I mean, I, Oni seems pretty good. I feel like I caught like the very, very tail end of that when I started mm -hmm. GameSpot. Uh, Mary Kish and I went to a Dark Souls three event in this winery in Sonoma, mm -hmm. but it was the building itself was a recreation of the the person who funded it, his like childhood home in Tuscany. But it was for Dark Souls 3, we didn't play the game. Oh, was this the fake wine castle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a real uh, castle, but it was based on a, it was a fake version yeah. of the real Italian okay. one. Yeah. They had sword fighting lessons. Mm. I don't know how good you get at sword fighting in like 20 minutes, but yeah. uh, Better downstairs. Better than you were before, maybe. So we went, we went down into the, the cellar to eat. And it was a massive cellar, like we went past hundreds of racks of wine. And to really double down on the medieval thing which mm -hmm. that game is not it's i mean it's like gothic medieval yeah, fantasy, yeah. whatever like they they wouldn't they didn't give us utensils for the, the, the meal <laughs> which had like mashed potatoes <laughs> and vegetables so like inevitably everybody had to ask for forks yeah and it was that was like a weird thing like that was they the, must have been so <laughs> bummed when people asked for us like oh man uh, this was a weird they don't get thing. it yeah. yeah our review score just went down right yeah. because we didn't get forks yeah that's like, why that's i did it like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to a Dark Souls 2 event once, and um, it was like in a castle-like area. Wait, is this the this one is that the I was Peter at? This yeah, yeah. one. <laughs> so um, I was there, and um, uh, like I had come through the wrong, I had gone to the wrong entrance for it. It was and, like um, a cellar. It was like a weird cellar thing, but like I had gone to like a back entrance, and it was a massive gate, and there was a dude standing there. It was Pe Peter Serafinowicz, who I didn't recognize as Peter Serafinowicz. Yeah. Um, and it was like we were waiting for 15 minutes. And we could hear things happening on the <laughs> other side of this door. And um, eventually, Peter Serafinowicz just gets incredibly annoyed and is like, give me a leg up. I'm going to climb over. And I don't know if you've seen Peter Serafinowicz. Uh, not in my person. My man is tall. Okay. And yeah, he is quite my... blocky. And he's like, you give me a leg up. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> why, why, am, why are you not giving me a leg <laughs> yeah. up? So like, I'm holding Peter Serafinowicz up. And he's like screaming over this gate to try and get someone's attention. And like they came over and let him in, and then later we found out he was in the game. I'm like, why is no one at Bandai Namco taking care of them, man? Like, yeah, or like, why didn't they like call him and be yeah, like, hey, like, you're supposed to be here? And man. funny enough, like I found him. He was sitting on a bench and kind of mumbling to himself mm. the entire time. I played Dark Souls 2, First time you see him, he's sitting on a bench, kind of mumbling to himself. Perfect. <laughs> and I was like, oh, perfect. Nailed yeah. it. Oh. Amazing. You Maybe that, that was the event. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Maybe yeah. you were the only one that got the true experience. <laughs> so that was the real Dark Souls. Yeah. yeah. The weirdest one I ever remember was Wargaming. It was one of those very, very oh. weird trips. I feel like Wargaming oh, yeah. is like... Wargaming well, first is... of all, they left someone behind. We had to get the Eurostar over to Paris and they left someone behind. Uh, didn't realise until we'd already started moving and uh, whoever's in charge of the trip just sort of went, oh, all right. And that was it. Like, yeah. Didn't even try and ring him. <laughs> And so we, we go to Paris and uh, it's like, oh, we're, we're an hour and a half early, so uh, let's, get a, let's get a coffee. So we just went. And then we went and then they said, oh, we're going to show you this uh, new patch update for, I think it was World of Warships and there'll be World of, uh, World of Tanks, obviously. And you can, uh, I was working for a TV company at the time, and, like, you can interview the head of Wargame. And I was like, okay, cool, it's great. Get there, build just doesn't work, straight up doesn't work. Yeah. And then I interviewed this guy in the back of a tank about a game that I haven't played because your build doesn't work. And I was like, okay, it's fine. We can make it work. And they said, okay, we've got like six hours uh, until the train back. We've got some remote control tanks and uh, they fire little pellets. A lot of my stories seem to be just firing pellets at them. Yeah, yeah. But like, they were like, yeah, and it's just little remote control tanks and now uh, you can just fire a pellet at the other tank. And they just left us to do that. And Sorry, yeah, so. and then a bunch of us just went. Do you, do you want to go get a drink? Yeah. <laughs> this is like you've taken me to Paris for this. That's yeah. like you can understand when the build doesn't work, whatever. But it's yeah. like, right? If you have nothing else lined up, you can always bust out a copy of Zoolander. 
All right, I'm not going to tell the Zoolander <laughs> story. Yeah. That's going to do it for us here tonight. <laughs> Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you all. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for the night. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. This has been Night 2. We'll be back tomorrow at the end. Of E3 will be over the next time you see me. Uh, but we're going to go all night long, starting at 6 p.m. So that's Pacific time. So join us then. Come on back. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.